Just thought I'd quickly jump on to talk briefly about digestion. When we eat things like plants, they quite literally contain indigestible fibre. We can't digest that, so that's kind of like just going to be added to the stool. We've also got these problematic plant proteins, which our stomach acid doesn't break down like we would animal proteins. So we've now got these complicated structures of proteins that are going through our digestive tract past the stomach, potentially causing permeability, inflammation, destroying microvilli. You've got lectins that have been shown to travel up the vagus nerve to the brain. So very destructive, where if you compare that to any animal products, but let's just say red meat, because everybody talks about red meat. When you finish chewing your meat and you swallow it, seconds later, it's in the stomach. The stomach is going to break this stuff down very efficiently because our stomach pH is so low. So we have no problem breaking the bonds of the proteins and liberating all of these nutrients. By the time it exits the stomach, right, we're talking about from about 40 minutes up to two hours. But I would say around an hour to an hour and a half, this food is, you know, in the stomach and then it's out. So essentially we have broken down, let's just say two hours, right? We have broken down the red meat completely in two hours. So this idea that it's really difficult to break down and digest, no. The stomach acid has done a fine job of breaking this stuff down to liquid, where after maximum two hours, all of that meal is now in the small intestine where we're absorbing all of the nutrients. And I've done this experiment. If you don't know already, I've had ileostomy surgery nearly eight years ago now. So I've got my whole digestive tract intact all the way to the ileum, and then it would empty into my bag. So I've lost my entire colon, but I have everything intact down to my ileum. Which is the third and final part of the small intestine. Here is a the colectomy that he had. If you see the bag where he raised his shirt up, that is the bag that his ileum empties into through the ostomy. So I've done these kinds of experiments every single day. And I would say that if I just sit down after sort of being empty and fasted, say, and I have one moderate sized meal, seven hours later, I'm basically empty. It's not even in my, my body anymore. It's, it's, some of it's in the bag. Some of it's already been emptied from my bag. For a normal person, I'm hoping, you know, you've got your colon. That's where you would reabsorb the water and the sodium, etc., which is why you kind of have that more bulked up stodged up stool, right? But for me, I don't see it that way because I don't have the pleasure of having a colon anymore. I have to carry this bag around with me. And so I can see we haven't had any issues breaking it down, you know, and, and I'd say seven hours later, it's gone through your digestive tract and it's now in the colon. Now for me, it would be in the bag. Many people around the world really truly believe that red meat is one of those things that's really difficult to digest. In fact, it's the easiest thing to digest. And I would just put it in the category of meat. So I don't know why we say like, oh, red meat in particular is so hard to digest as if like pork and chickens, really all that different. Meat is meat, whether it's fish, beef, lamb, chicken, pork, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. Why would the ultimate elimination diet leave red meat alone standing? Why, why is it not like bread? Why is it not porridge oats and fruit? Well, the reason why is because this is food. You're left with just food. You're left with the essential nutrients. It's also non-inflammatory and it's easy to digest. You know, the most sensitive people on the planet that can't eat all these different plants and they have all these different allergies and reactions, they can, however, digest beef or lamb. Maybe some people have histamine issues, which is why a lot of people end up on a lamb-only diet or lamb with non-aged beef. And another thing... Oh, listen, there's one other thing I wanted to ask you about. Let us know. Um, in the comments. I'm genuinely curious about this, but I used to have meat sweats. Oh, here come the meat sweats. But this is what I believe happens when you combine meat, like red meat, with carbohydrates and vegetables and things like that. I think that that all of a sudden creates a bit of an issue. It's quite difficult because you've probably got this sort of high level of Randall cycle activation, you know, carbs and fats. And then you've got the protein and you've got this fiber. I think that's probably what meat sweats really are. I don't think, because since being on a carnivore diet, and I've been on a very clean, pure carnivore diet now for almost two years, I've not had any meat sweats. And multiple times I've sat down and eaten 1.1, 1.2 kilos of red meat in one sitting. I'm only five foot six. So you would expect me to have these so-called meat sweats. Well, since going carnivore, they seem non-existent. So... Let us know if you've experienced the same. Um, and yeah, hope you found this interesting. Do appreciate it. Take care.